Hey guys, it's Peter Fry, and welcome to the Living with Hope podcast, a weekly conversation where we dig into God's Word and explore what it means to live with hope in Jesus. I've got a buddy of mine who I went to college with who's joining me today via video on the podcast. Mark Bartholder is the pastor of Cedar Creek Community Church in Grafton, Wisconsin. And Mark and I have sort of a little bit of an affinity because many of you know, I pastored a church in Grafton, Massachusetts. And so we are Grafton pastor buddies. Mark, thanks for being on the podcast. Thanks so much for having me, man. This is such a blessing to to share this time with you and to talk with you. Yeah, dude, I have uh, sweet memories of Mark in college, we were on the same da- <laughs> we were on the same dorm floor, and I was his RA. And Mark, Mark, do you have any memories? Um, keep it like <laughs> kosher, but any <laughs> memories of me in college that you want to share? I have I have so many wonderful memories. <laughs> Legitimately, the the majority of my memories are all wonderful of you, uh, Peter. You were you were such a um, you were just such a minister on that floor, and you truly prayed and, and, and guided such such a, us younger guys through difficult times in life and through transitions and times. So I really do appreciate the role that you played in my life and so many others on the floor. On top of that, you showed us how to have fun, too. So I appreciate awesome. that, too. <laughs> well, good. Uh, Mark ha- stands out to me as a guy who... Uh, passionately loves. He loves the people around him. I just remember him just being like one of those guys. You know those people in your life who you just feel good when you're around them? Mark was one of those guys, and um, he does that as a pastor. Um, I have followed him from a distance. I'm so so thankful for social media and the way it just allows me to connect and follow your journey. Um, it's um, been sweet to see you go out to Wisconsin and pastor and love your people. And just recently, I saw Mark post a video of the sermon series that his church Uh, just started and is walking through right now, and it's called Pivot. And Mark, I'd love for you to just kind of like tell us about that sermon series, because I think it's so on point for where we are as a culture, and 2020 is just a crazy year. And yeah, can you speak to that? Yeah, so I don't think you have to live long to realize that, that life is incredibly difficult, that the challenges you face in life are real. Um, and then this year happened. <laughs> and this year seemed to amplify those things all the more. And, and it was unique in that um, the challenges weren't necessarily my challenge and your challenge was different. But now everyone together was kind of going through these hardships. And it put churches, it put businesses in a difficult situation. And um, I, I know I was guilty of kind of watching all of this happen kind of like a deer caught in the headlights and not knowing what it means for me, what it means for the church, what it means for discipleship. And what I've kind of come to through prayer and through talking with other pastors is that this isn't necessarily something that we just hold on and, and hope that it goes by quickly and that it just passes, but rather it's an opportunity for us to pivot and, and pivot, remembering that there are crucial things that we have a foundation in, that we stay firmly planted in, but, but pivot in kind of what our interactions look like and what the purpose of our interactions are and, and kind of just being more purposeful in, in what we're doing and how we're doing it. Yeah, that's so good. Man, I listened to your sermon. Um, if you guys want to check out Mark and his church, uh, check them out online. What, what's your website? cedarcreekcommunitychurch.org. Okay, super easy. I listened to the first sermon, I think from September 7th of the sermon series, and Mark used a basketball analogy. Now, I'm not a basketball guy, and so (laughs) assume that I'm not. Can you explain that to me? Because I I think that was so good. Sure thing. So, I mean, obviously, I'm not a basketball guy either. I'm shaped more (laughs) like a basketball than a basketball player. (laughs) <laughs> but in basketball, when you pick up your dribble, you can't just keep running around the court. That's not how it works. When you pick up 
you have to stay firmly planted. But that doesn't mean that you just stand there and wait for something to happen. You can pivot and you can shift your focus around the court with the same mission um, in focus. So you still want to score the basket. You still want your team to win. You still want to score points. So while you're still firmly planted, you can still pivot um, while staying in the same place. And I think that's what we're called to do as Christians. In difficult times that we go through and difficult times that the church goes through, we stand firmly planted in the truths that Scripture tells us and the, 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 the power of the hope that we have in Christ. Um, but that doesn't keep us from pivoting um, in, in, in what church looks like, what relationships look like, what worshiping God looks like. That stuff can, can, can pivot in the midst of changes in the world around us. Mm. I love that just image of one foot being firmly planted and the other kind of moving around. And and I think you said in that sermon that to pivot is to change direction without losing balance, momentum, or purpose. And And that is just, I think that's so good because I think all of us, whether it's the pandemic of 2020 or whether it's just Um, unexpected things happen in life. You know, you get a test result from the doctor or you lose a loved one or um, life is just emotionally hard. And in those things, I think it's easy to feel like, like you said, we just got to hold on and get through this. And one of the things that the Lord continually is teaching me is, Peter, I don't want to work on the other side of this. I want to work in the midst of it. And um, as as you as a pastor and as a church are thinking through that, like, what are some of these tangible ways that you see that we need to pivot in this season? Sure thing. I mean, um, again, I've been guilty of this, of, of, going throughout the week and kind of getting beat up by life. And then my eyes always fall on Sunday morning. All right, I'll get to Sunday morning. Sunday morning, I'll be nourished. I'll be built up. I'll be fed. And then I just got to go back into the world, get beat up again, and just hold on for that Sunday morning. Um, And I don't necessarily think that's the the picture of the church that scripture paints. Um, we, we often rely on our pastors or we rely on our spiritual leaders to have a relationship with Christ. When what scripture tells us is that, that, that we have a priesthood, that, that we have access to God, that individually we can have a true relationship with God, that the curtain has been torn, mm-hmm. um, that, that we don't have a relationship with God through our pastor or, or through a religious leader. Um, and, and that means that in the midst of the challenges, it's not a man, wait until I see my pastor again, or wait till I can see that person again. It's a, let me fall on my knees now and, and receive the, the hope that is promised to me from God. Um, so I think that's one main way that, that we pivot and we pivot from our focus being on, yes, I have a relationship with God because I have a relationship with my pastor. And it being, no, I have a relationship with God directly, direct access to the God who's in control, even when life feels like it's spiraling out of control. Mm. I, I, I love, man, just this morning I was reading in John chapter 10 where Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. And he's uh-huh. describing that. And it says, the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them. And when uh-huh. he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow them for they know his voice. Oh, and good. like, I was thinking about like part of following Jesus and what it means to be a follower of Jesus is that we know his voice. And um, like, Many of us know the voices of all, like we have so many voices coming at us right now. And like, whether that's like our social media news feed or the news or all the political squabbling going on. And there's so many voices competing for our attention. And we even have the voices of those Christian podcast we listen to, like this one, or uh, <laughs> your pastor, or whoever it is, and like there's those voices too. But more, I, I hope that in this season, the loudest voice that we can hear is the voice of the Good Shepherd, mm-hmm. and um, I, I love that 
shift of focus to like we have access. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I've, I've been there and I know you have too and you're living a life and it just seems like one thing is just going wrong after another. Yeah. And you just keep getting beat up and you're like, I just can't catch a break. Um, and, and how comforting is it to know that in those times when you realize that you don't have control over a situation? That's one of the hardest things for me is when I recognize that I don't have control over a situation. And that time when you recognize that, man, nothing I do, I, I can't get out of this situation on my own. And you're forced to fall on your knees and surrender to a God who is in control. Like, how amazing is that, that we have a direct line to the God who truly is in control in the midst of a time when we feel like there is no control. But God is in control. Man, that's so amazing. And man, about a year and a half ago, you got a phone call that caused you to realize that very reality. Uh, Can you tell a little bit of that story? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, about a year and a half ago, um, I went to the doctor and had some tests done and and got a call that, that I had colon cancer. Um, and, um, obviously hearing those words, um, a lot of people hear them, but it doesn't get any easier. And hearing those words is really heavy and really hard. And, um, I mean, my wife and I, we have two young kids. So obviously all that goes through your head and everything like that. That's, that was one of those situations where I realized there's, there's nothing I can do right now. Like, I have no idea why this is happening. Um, I'm terrified. I don't know what this looks like. Um, but the comfort came um, in, in talking through it and praying about it with a God who wasn't surprised. As surprised as I was when I got that. As surprised as I was when I got that phone call. God wasn't surprised in the least. He wasn't saying, oh man, I didn't expect this. What should we do now? No, he was entirely in control of the entire situation. And in the the depths of my questions, I could truly call out to those questions to a God who who wasn't surprised, who was in control of it all. And and, and he's protected me. and, and, And by his grace through surgeries and through the doctor's guidance and wisdom, I, I don't have cancer right now, which is wonderful and, and, and prayerful. We will never have it again. Um, but, but through that difficult time of, of not knowing what the future looks like and, um, and, and just the, the, the fear that, that happens in life and so easily entangles us um, to call out to a God is in control. There, there's just no greater hope than that. Mm. And, and so as we, we pivot when those moments in life come and when we're caused to realize this is out of my control, we have something we can stand on mm. in that um, he he knows. Like you said, it's not a surprise to him. And I think that has been um, just something that has sustained me in um, – a lot of the ups and downs of Mary and I's journey of just that reality of this is not a surprise to him. And he's, he's walking with me in this and he is in control. And sometimes he is wanting to show us (laughs) the scenic root of his power Mm -hmm. and glory in the midst of suffering and in the midst of a pandemic. And, Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm just like talking with Mark and we talked a little bit before the podcast, but uh, just hearing how this is a moment in time when God wants to do something in our lives. And um, I think a huge part of that is that we, as much as it this is a season where many of us feel isolated. It's not a season to disengage from what he's doing in and through the church. Yeah. And um, can you talk into that, Mark? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said before, my mentality for the longest time was get to Sunday. Cause then on Sunday I get to have these relationships with people and I get to have these interactions. But when, when the author of Hebrews tells us to not neglect getting together, I don't think he was talking about 45 minutes to an hour on Sunday. 
I think it was talking about actually living life with one another, that, that, that we go through these challenges in life together. Um, and, and, and so when we're diagnosed with cancer, when we, when we get this, this difficult news about our job or about a relationship, um, that we're not, we're not meant to go through that alone, but we're meant to go through that in community and, and as a part of a family. So, um, yeah, I mean, so, so pivoting in a world, in the world that we live in now is, is pivoting away from just looking at our church family as this, um, this organization that we're a part of and kind of we have one thing in common with these people and, and that's the one area that we have in common with them. And then on Monday, we kind of, if we see them in the grocery store, we duck in an aisle so we don't have to talk to them. <laughs> um, and instead of that, really living life together and being vulnerable with one another and, and, and leaning on one another. Because, um, I mean, those of us who've experienced hardships and difficulties in life recognize that, man, if you go through that stuff alone, um, it, it's hard to get through it. It's hard to get through it. You truly need companionship. And, and, and community in the midst of that. Yeah, I, I think, man, one of the things that the Lord's been teaching me in this season about community is that I've got to change my expectations a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I, I think as pastors, part of our job is to make community, it, we, we want to foster community among the church. And so we make it look a certain way. Like we've got these opportunities and like uh-huh. you can be part of the small group or whatever it is. And then like pandemic comes and yeah. you can't get together or it looks different. And, mm-hmm. and part of what I have to realize is as a believer in Jesus and as a follower of him, I've got to like, in some ways, pivot by tossing out my, what I once expected community to look like, yeah. say, okay, here's where my foot is planted. God's called me to community. Yes. Okay. Um, and Mary and I are like, we're like, I'm talking out of like the processing of our own hearts in this because Mary and I are trying to be super cautious for her health and all these things. And how do we, continue to engage in community as God has called us to when it's going to look different than it once did. And um, I think part of that process is saying, um, okay, what is community? Like, what is the purpose of the the church community of the people that God has placed uh, in my life? And um, Mark, as you think about pivoting in terms of community and how we view the church, like what are some things that we need to like plant ourselves in as we pivot in terms of this is what community is? Yeah, I think I think I think the big one really is um, vulnerability and 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 being entirely open with a group of people. Um, so they see the, the ugly and then they see the, the, not the perfect filters of Instagram and not the, the perfect moments of Facebook, but they recognize the, the struggles and the pains that life brings. Um, and what I think community looks like in the midst of that is, is recognizing, yes, that we're all experiencing kind of this ugly side of life and this painful and this difficult side of life. Um, but, but that's not, that's, that's not our, our destiny or our doom. Um, but that together we can truly spur one another onto good works. We can truly encourage one another. Um, those old, those old, uh, TV shows where someone was caught in quicksand and they would like sink in 30 seconds. <laughs> exactly. I, I want a friend that's not just going to be sitting on the outside of the quicksand looking at me and being, oh yeah, man, I'm sorry. You're in the quicksand. I hear you. I'm here we here with you. I want you to know that I support you. I want a friend that's going to do everything in their power to get me out of the quicksand. Um, and I think that's what true community is, not only being vulnerable, but then also being being open for support and, and being open for encouragement. And, um, and, and, and yes, calling out for help and also receiving help and also being eager to, to extend the loving arm and to extend the encouragement in the midst of it. And that's totally going to look different. 
and, and and praise the Lord for social media in times like this that we can still have interaction and still have communication over social media and over our cell phones and things like that. Um, um, but it, it is certainly going to look different, but that doesn't minimize its importance. Yeah. One of the things that I think has stood out to me as I was listening to uh, some of Mark's series here is the intentionality that has to come in this season. And I think we have been disrupted. The status quo has been disrupted and we have to be intentional about some of these uh, priorities in our lives that um, maybe we're easier to be passive in. And man, I think that's just so true in so many areas of our lives that, um, you know, 2020 is forcing us to reevaluate not only our priorities and how we spend our time, but um, how we, how, how do we become intentional people with what we're doing in life? And I think part of that is like having, um, purpose and a mission. And I know that that's part of your series as well. And, and so how, how do we pivot in that? So, so our church, Sea Creek Community Church, our mission statement is simply to love God and to love others. Um, and that's what we strive to do in everything we do. But for too long, it's always been how has the organization of whatever church it is been loving God and loving others? How, what ministries are there to serve the community? What ministries are there to take care of the area? And, and in the world we're in right now, big organizational stuff and that, that stuff is falling apart and dwindling. And, and what we're having to pivot to is not what is the organization of Cedar Creek Community Church doing, but what is the actual Cedar Creek Community Church doing? What is the church, the people that make up the church, what are they doing to love God and love others? And it's, it's this pivot away from these are the ministries that I serve in at my church. And rather, um, yeah, I reached out to my neighbor and they're struggling through this time and I'm really praying with them. And, and they're coming over for a barbecue later so that we can talk about it. Or, or, or my coworker is, is struggling with their marriage right now. And, and so my wife and I were going to sit with them and pray with them through this or it's it's my child is is really stressed out with school and friendship so I'm going to set aside time just to focus on them and their discipleship and it's this intentionality of time it's an it's intentionality of of words and, and and everything we do focusing not I'm going to set aside some of my time to be involved in this ministry and recognizing that it's all of our time. It's, it's all of the time that you're at work. It's all the time that you're at the grocery store. It's all the time that you're going in a walk through your neighborhood. All of those times are the times that we're on mission and that we should be looking for opportunities to love God and love others. And when we get to participate in those, man, what joy does that bring? That brings so, so much joy um, to be able to, to be a participant in loving God and loving others in the midst of the struggles that we face. So good. I think of the parable of the Good Samaritan and a message I heard on that years ago where the big question there is, who's my neighbor? And the sermon kind of drew out that the idea there is a neighbor is anyone whose need we can see, whose need we can meet. And like, I, I think that's such a good like shift of focus. Like many of us are are really wrestling with purpose in this season because life looks different than we thought it would. And as we wrestle through that, we have to recognize that God's calling isn't this nebulous uh, vocation that we're uh, always trying to discover, but God's calling is right in front of us and, and who he's calling us to. And um, speaking of which, um, your your part of your calling, Mark, is is you're a father and a husband. Tell us about your family. Oh man, they're awesome. They are so awesome. My wife puts up with me and my terrible jokes every day on how she does it, um, but she's wonderful. We have a four year old daughter, Sophia, and almost two year old son, Titus, and they're uh, they're having a blast. And 
Um, they don't quite understand why they can't go to the community swimming pool this summer, um, but but um, but they have found other ways, and they're just such a joy to us. And and uh, life never stops. That's for sure. <laughs> it never stops. But but they are they are a joy, and and we have fun in the midst of it all. So fun, um, so fun, man! I I love seeing their posts on social media and. You guys went to an apple orchard last oh, week. Oh, yeah, we did. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Titus oh, loves oh. apples. He loves apples. And for some reason, he was able to find all of the ones that were rotting on the floor. Uh, <laughs> it's a miracle that he's alive. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we had we had a blast picking apples. And, and we live in Wisconsin. So fun for us is going to look at the cows and seeing how cheese is made <laughs> and looking at fields and grass. That's that's what we do in Wisconsin. Amazing. Amazing. Man, um and I I'm just encouraged as we talk about pivoting because I I recognize that I have a lot of expectations. Like man, man, I love memes and I love the expectation versus reality memes. And I feel like there's so many good ones. Like if if there was one, I know that there's a lot of good things that God is doing amidst the pandemic, but one of the good things has been some of the memes that have come out. <laughs> 2020. And, and just seeing like, we, we had these expectations, many of us, oh, so and then different. reality looks so different. And I feel like it's such a picture of like, this is all of life, but many of us weren't aware of it in <laughs> in the smaller aspects when it wasn't a worldwide phenomenon and in in so much of our lives we have these expectations of what we see god this is what i want you to do with my life or this is what i want this to look like and then reality looks very different and i know for a lot of people listening to this podcast that might be you today where you say life looks very different today than i ever expected and it brings a lot of questions in your relationship with God and your relationship to the church and um, to wrap up the podcast Mark could you just speak to that person and what do you want to say to them um man I would say that if if that's if that's you and, and you are in a place today where you don't know how you got here and things aren't the way that you ever expected or the way that you think they should be. I feel you. I feel you. I'm there with you. Um, this, this year has been a year filled with pain and heartache and sorrow. Um, but in the midst of all of the pain, heartache and sorrow, we have a God that is loving and gracious and compassionate. And, and who, who, although we may be going through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear because he's there here with us and, and he's walking alongside of us. You are not alone, um, but you have a God who, who who wasn't surprised. Surprised as we may be, a God who wasn't surprised and, and longs to have a loving, intimate relationship with you. Don't run from that. Run to it. <laughs>